Hello, my name is Dr. Ruth Williams, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to Glaucoma Research Foundation's second annual Glaucoma Patient Summit. Though we cannot be together in person, we are so thrilled to have you join us. Today, I will be your host, and I will guide you through this important event to educate and empower patients and families. We'll be highlighting advances in treatment options and provide practical information to help you understand how to live with glaucoma. Our speakers include leading glaucoma specialists, patients, and caregivers. We would like to thank Allergan, our presenting sponsor, for their leadership support of this event, as well as all of our corporate sponsors who helped make today's summit possible. It is now my pleasure to introduce Andrea Epstein, the chair of the Glaucoma Patient Summit Steering Committee. A few years ago, Andrea urged us to host a Glaucoma Patient Education Forum and we are so fortunate to have her ongoing leadership on the steering committee. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you so much, Dr. Williams. I am honored to be here with all of you today and thrilled that we've been able to develop and share this year's program. The speakers, updated glaucoma information, and the resources to support you and your loved ones in a safe and truly globally accessible format. Without a doubt, it is the incredible staff at GRF their creativity and nimble efforts that have made the second virtual patient summit a reality. On behalf of the steering committee and all of us in attendance today, thank you for transforming this event so seamlessly. Last year at our first annual patient summit, I shared a bit about my own journey to finding Glaucoma Research Foundation and accessing their wonderful work more than seven years ago when I attended Glaucoma 360 a unique clinical meeting that focuses on new innovations for glaucoma. I was searching for information, the latest research, whatever I could learn about glaucoma treatment for my husband, David, who had already been diagnosed with glaucoma when we first met more than 35 years ago. I absorbed as much information as I could, and through the process, I gained something even more important. I felt empowered, empowered to keep looking for the best possible treatments alongside my husband. When it comes to my family's healthcare, I am a firm believer that knowledge is power. And I think that holds true for all of us here today, whether you are a patient, family member, or caregiver. It's also at the core of what we hope you will all gain today, that with this patient-centered program, you will leave as a more fully empowered advocate for yourself or your loved one. Now it's time to kick off today's program with Richie Kahn, our patient speaker, who will share his inspiring story with us. Richie has been an active volunteer and donor with the Glaucoma Research Foundation and has also been a key part of the Patient Steering Committee. For the last decade in his career, Richie has been working to build awareness of clinical research as a care option and draw attention to the importance of advocating for what's best for individual patients. Richie clearly lives his philosophy of advocating for himself and others and calls himself a glaucomaniac. He is an inspiring example of how to be your own advocate. Please join me in welcoming Richie Kahn. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for the second annual and first ever virtual Glaucoma Patient Summit. As much as I was looking forward to connecting with everyone in person today, sharing a meal, and learning more about your stories, the pandemic had other plans. But that's okay. Any opportunity to connect with patients is a worthwhile one, and I look forward to learning from each and every one of you. I'd like to begin by sharing a bit about my story. Though I come from a family of nurses and used to volunteer in the back of an ambulance myself, I realized early on that a career in medicine wasn't for me. I was passionate about improving patient lives, but wanted to influence change on a broader scale, which brought me to public health. I spent my time in public health focused in patient advocacy before making the move to clinical research over a decade ago. Throughout my career in both public health and research, the desire to improve patient lives and incorporate the patient perspective in all that I do has never left me. In December of 2018, I took a job at an ophthalmology company. It was a great opportunity and I was fortunate to land it, but my friends and family will tell you, I just was not enthusiastic. Eyeballs weren't my thing. Now, I'm not a very woo-woo person. I don't believe in kismet, fate, or whatever you want to call it. But timing is funny. 
a few months after coming uh, on board at that ophthalmology job, I learned that I was experiencing progressive damage to my optic nerves, one of the hallmarks of glaucoma. The first thing I did after confirming my diagnosis was talk with my wife. The second thing I did was put on my patient advocacy hat and reach out to the Glaucoma Research Foundation. As a fierce advocate and someone passionate about developing promising new therapies, treatments, and tools for the patients that need them most, I wanted to know, what could I do to help? Over the next 18 months, I learned as much as I could about my condition. I spoke with a wide variety of patients facing varied circumstances and never once hesitated to ask questions. Eventually, this led me down a path I hadn't expected to travel. Despite all clinical signs of my disease appearing stable, I learned my vision had continued to deteriorate. In the span of several months, I lost between 15 and 20% of my vision, something I hadn't even noticed. One of the fascinating things about vision loss is you might not notice it either. In fact, your brain is so good at filling in the blanks, at least filling in the blanks the best it can, um, that sometimes it, it plays a bit of a trick on you. So for example, when my wife and I are going for a walk in the neighborhood and I start grinning like an idiot, it's usually because I think I see a fantastic neighborhood dog. And I probably have previously in that exact location. But on this particular walk, it's usually a rock, mailbox, or just a front yard. So whether dog, mailbox, or otherwise, all that to say, you need to find a good way to cope that works for you. And for me, humor helps. And so does staying positive. If my vision continues to deteriorate, I'll be able to process sound faster and plow through audiobooks like nobody's business. If I'm no longer able to run outside without assistance, I can partner with a running guide or seeing eye dog. And if I can't find the dog poop in the backyard, something I'm struggling with right now, I'll have the built-in excuse for my, why my wife has to do it for me. In addition to having a good attitude, I also find immense value in action. For me, that means working with researchers to incorporate the patient perspective, connecting with patients and volunteering my time and unique skill set. Working with researchers provides a sense of purpose and empowerment. When I'm lucky enough to connect with fellow patients, I can serve as a sounding board and sometimes alleviate a bit of the stress and fear they're experiencing. When I share my story, I can build awareness of the importance of getting your vision checked and maybe even save someone else from symptom-free vision loss. After all, they don't call glaucoma the silent thief of sight for nothing. As I mentioned earlier, running is one of my passions and another one of the ways I, diagnose, uh, I deal with my diagnosis. I won't blather on about the benefits of exercise, but I will say running helps keep me sane. These are just a few of the examples of the ways I cope with my diagnosis. In addition to developing adequate coping mechanisms, it's also critically important to build your emotional support network. Whether this comes from a team of individuals you surround yourself with to actively participate in your care, friends you vent to when the going gets tough, or loved ones you confide in about your hopes and fears, the important part is understanding you're not alone in this. Across the globe, there are over 76 million individuals living with glaucoma, and that doesn't take into consideration all the friends, family members, and supporters that have their backs. My vision loss has continued to progress, something that happens to roughly 10% of patients on appropriate treatment. I only learned this was happening because I was constantly talking about my diagnosis and working to build awareness of the importance of screening for vision loss. One of these conversations led me to a wonderful doctor who invited me to visit him at his clinic for a seventh opinion. I jumped at the opportunity, and this is when I learned about my rapid and unanticipated vision loss. When I wasn't satisfied with all the question marks surrounding my diagnosis, I kept pushing, advocating for myself and looking for answers. I was evaluated by a neuro-ophthalmologist a doctor that specializes in the intersection of the brain and the eyes. I had MRIs taken to make sure I didn't have a tumor and to confirm that I hadn't had a series of miniature strokes, very real possibilities and valid explanations for the damage to my optic nerves. I even went through a battery of genetic tests that took several months to come back, but ultimately provided some answers. If it weren't for that seventh opinion or those genetic tests, I wouldn't have come to the understanding of my disease that I have today. 
In fact, there's an excellent chance I wouldn't have visited the glaucoma clinic for another few months, uh, all the while with my vision loss progressing and flying under the radar. I want you to walk away from the patient summit feeling empowered, inspired, and energized. I want you to be better positioned to advocate for yourselves and to play an active role in your care. When something doesn't feel right, I want you to reach out to your care team because if you don't advocate for yourself, you can't expect anyone else to. And if you wanna learn more about how to become a more effective advocate, I want you to get in touch. Thanks for your time and enjoy the conference. Thank you, Richie. That was a wonderful and inspiring presentation. You are an excellent example of how to be your own advocate. 